What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video we're going to talk about flex pitch. This is going to save you a lot of time and you don't even have to buy Melodyne or any autotune software because Logic has it integrated inside of its software so let's get right to it. So the way I'm going to demonstrate the flex pitch is I'm actually going to use a sample library and then I'm going to go ahead and bounce it into an audio track and then we're going to take a look at the flex pitch on the audio track because again it doesn't work on a MIDI track. We need to bounce it into an audio track and I'll show you how to do that very quick and very easily. So we're going to open up this instance of play and I'm going to go to my voices of soul, go to the phrases and I'm going to choose this first one right here. So the phrase we're going to use is down here at B1. So this is what it sounds like. Right, so that is what we're going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and record this onto a track. Okay, so that's our phrase. And now, without having to bounce in place like you usually would, so you would go here to bounce and then bounce project, we don't want to do that because we're going to have to we're going to take too much time and the the file is going to save somewhere on your hard drive and we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an easier trick. We're going to right click. I'm going to show you the shortcut here. You're going to right click, go to where it says bounce and join and then in bounce in place. So the shortcut for that is going to be Control B. So let's just hit Control B. And this is the shortcut for bounce in place. So it's going to be instrument one, bounce in place. I'm going to call this voice flex pitch test. Now you're going to want it to go on a new track. This might be grayed out. You want it, it's going to have it mute, muted, or you can leave it. I don't know why you'd want to delete. Well, oh, this is to delete the source. So this is to delete um, the MIDI track. Well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, include, include, and then overload protection. Let's turn that off, right? Because what that's going to do is that it's going to raise the volume on that. It's going to normalize it. Um, and we don't want that. So I put it off so it can come out exactly as I played it. So let's go ahead and press OK. And here we have it. So now let me expand this a little bit. So here we have our audio. So let's hear it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the editor. So we're going to press E, right? Or you can hit this little scissors button up here. Again, shortcuts, shortcuts. Um, e is going to be to open up this audio editor here. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and enter the flex mode or the flex pitch. So you're going to click this little button right here. And it's going to say turn on flex, so turn it on. And then you're going to see this. So here you have a bunch of flexing options. So you could slice audio. You could move it monophonically. So let's say it's an instrument that doesn't have a pitch. Um, like drums, you could flex time it monophonically. You could do um, this, choose an automatic. You could do it rhythmically, polyphonic, speed, and tempo. But what we're interested in today is flex pitch, which is right up here. So as soon as we press the flex pitch, you're going to see that this turns into a piano, right? Because now we're looking at actual notes here. So this is the flex pitch inside of Logic Pro. Now what's cool about this is again it's integrated into the software. You do not need to own any plugins, right? So I have here um, Melodyne, right? You don't need to you don't need to own the program to have you know some kind of an auto tune function here. So let's go ahead and talk about what we see here on the screen. So here we see obviously the notes that are being sung. We see the notes 
here on the keyboard. So if I click on one, you're going to see the note highlight so you can see what notes or pitches your uh, the the voice is singing or your singing. So when you hover over a rectangle here, you're going to see six dots. Now each of these dots have a function. The top left is going to be a pitch drift. So it's pretty much how you enter the note. So depending whether you move it down or up, the note is going to enter either flatter or sharper. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve when you're doing your recordings. The center one is a fine pitch tool, which I could move it very, very refined to, to get the tuning that you want. So the reason why you'd want to use fine pitch is, for example, if you're recording, let's say, a, a quintet or you know a, a duet or a trio or something like that, there are certain notes in a chord that you'd want to really tune. Um, for example, if you have three trumpet players playing some kind of a major chord, that third is naturally going to want to be a little bit more flat. So you'd use... Um, this fine pitch to kind of flatten that note that way the chord is nice and balanced so this is why you'd use a fine pitch you can also grab the rectangle and just move it up a block it'll just snap into the next available note All right so let's look at the top right so this is the pitch drift for the exit of the note so the pitch drift for the entrance to the next note so again you can move it up or down if you want it flat or sharper so we're going to leave it as is for now. Formant shift. So what this is, is it's actually going to, it's almost like when you speed up a voice or you slow down a voice where, you know, when you speed it up, it kind of squeals a little bit. And when you slow it down, it, you know, sounds like uh, darker. Uh, you start to get a little bit more bass in the voice. Um, and it just starts to sound like a slow down version of whatever, you know, the person is singing. Vibrato is, well, the, the, the detuning of the voice rapidly, but in a very melodic manner. I guess that's the best way to put vibrato, because vibrato is essentially moving out of the pitch and coming right back into it, right? So um, it's a pulsing. You could also think of it as a pulsing. So you can control how much pulsing you want. If you want to flatline the voice, if you want to give more vibrato, you can even take it to an extreme here, or you can go to the extreme the other way. Um, whatever it is that you need this for, you could definitely use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it to where it was, which is 100%. And then here you have a gain knob. So if you look at the waveform right here, and you raise it up, you're going to see the waveform for just this phrase, just this little block, is going to go up. So if you ever find yourself needing to boost a specific phrase, you could do this inside of the flex pitch as well. So let's go ahead and put this back at zero. And now let's hear what some of these do. I'm going to go a little bit more into the phrase. That way you can hear um, with more clarity what's going on with each of these knobs. So I'm going to go ahead and start it here. Let's give it more time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use this long phrase here because it's the biggest and it has the most things going on um, com in comparison to the ones in the beginning. So, pitch drift in the beginning. Let's see what happens. So this is the normal phrase again. <laughs> if I raise it, you're going to hear that it's going to start higher and then kind of drift into the note. <laughs> right? It's a, it's a good idea to use this tool. Like, let's say you're singing jazz or blues where you want to hit a specific note before you enter the note. Um, this is a good way to really center and hone in that pitch. So let's go ahead and bring this to the flatter side, see what happens. Okay, so again, it starts off a little bit flatter. Um, in this situation, it doesn't sound good, but there will be situations where it can sound good. So next thing we're going to look at is, ref well, fine pitch. We kind of heard it a little bit. So this is negative 16. And we're going to see what happens if we just refine it. Right? You hear this very little adjustment. But 
at the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's in tune with whatever song you're doing. Or let's say you're doing a song and like instead of using 440 as your tuning, you know, you do use 432 or, or whatever the case is, you're going to want to use this um, fine pitch tool. Of course, you can also move it so I can change the pitch dramatically. So. And you see how smooth it is. It, it's almost like she meant to sing that note. So again, it's a very powerful tool and Logic has done a pretty, pretty good job with this flex pitch. So now we could do the pitch drift at the end, so entering the next note, so again. All right, you can go ahead and adjust that, and it works the same way if you go to the flatter side. So now we're gonna look at formant pitch. So this is the one that's a little bit weird, and I, I th assume that this is gonna be for a more specialized kind of sound, but if I go ahead and hold this, a little shadow will appear of the of the rectangle, but it will disappear the moment you let go of the click. But what this does is you kind of can hear the pitch as I move it, so. Not sure if that's audible or if it's doing it now. I know it did it before. But you will sometimes hear a little bit of a um, the note kind of moving up and down here. But if I, let's say I turn it up all the way up here. Let's see what happens to the sound. <laughs> Right, so it kind of gives you that like squeal, that baby effect, and then if I go down here, it's gonna give you that like I don't know, very dark, low, deep effect. <laughs> right, so again, very specialized. You could kind of find a way to use this creatively. Vibrato. So as you can see, these lines up and down represent vibrato. If I flatten out this curve it will try to normalize the vibrato as best it can to a flat line. Let's hear it. All right, you can hear the, the note actually try to control the vibrato. You'll still get it. It's not 100% perfect, um, but then again, nor, none, you know, nor is Melodyne or, or anything like that. It's not 100% perfect, but it does kill a little bit of that vibrato. <laughs> Right, but what happens if we pull it to the extreme? So when you pull it to the other side, it actually sounds like it does more, right? It stretches out that vibrato a lot more. So let's exaggerate even more, see what happens. Right, so essentially that's what the vibrato tool does. Let's go ahead and put it back at 100. All right, and this is the normal version again. And now this is obviously the gain. So if I pull this pot up, then only this phrase will have a gain boost. So let's take a listen. So there you have it. This is the flex pitch tool inside of Logic. This can work for anything that has pitch. So even if you're using sample libraries, again, I showed you how you can bounce this to an audio track without having to bounce it out of the program and then import it into the program. Everything is done hands-on. So again, just to kind of briefly recover, uh, recover those steps, let's see here. You right-click the MIDI track. You're going to go to Bounce and Join and Bounce in Place. You're going to hit Op or Control rather B. And that's going to be the option to prompt this screen here. And then you go ahead and decide what you want to do with this. If you have any questions on the flex pitch or, you know, how to use it or, you know, any specific questions, please drop your comments down below and I can get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my videos. And don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll catch you guys later.